Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk again, and this is a second video in my series of basic electronics. You can see the written version with words at xrobots.co.uk slash electronics. Last time I talked about basic soldering, and we made this LED and resistor combination with wires attached, which as you can see works. Um, today I'm going to tell you about calculating the resistor value and wiring multiple LEDs together. So in order to understand current flowing through this wire and the LED and the resistor, I'm going to show you a piece of hose pipe. It's just a piece of garden hose pipe, which would typically, um, you'd attach to a tap and of course it would carry water. So basically one end of the hose pipe would be higher pressure than the other one because that's where water would go into it. And of course, um, water would flow from the higher pressure end to the lower pressure end. And that's like current flowing through a wire. The water pressure pushing it in electrical terms is called potential difference. That's why we need a battery with two terminals and generally we need a complete circuit for electricity to flow because electricity has to flow from the higher pressure point to the lower pressure point. So potential difference is measured in volts in the same way that um, your height is measured in centimetres or feet and inches. So although people talk about voltage what they're actually talking about is potential difference and the unit of measurement is volts. Um, current is of course measured in amps and the resistance to electricity flowing um, is measured in ohms so that's a bit like squeezing the hose pipe or restricting the flow. In order to calculate the voltage, the current or the resistance we can use Ohm's law. All of these three things are related so basically that we can use voltage equals current times resistance, current equals voltage over resistance or resistance is voltage over current. I represents current. So in our LED with resistor example, basically the LED we know is rated at 2 volts, and at 2 volts it will draw roughly 20 milliamps. Some LEDs are different, so you need to check what you've, what you've purchased. It will only draw the current it needs at 20 milliamps, provided the voltage is correct. So when I had the, the uh, LED on earlier, I was actually using this pack of batteries, which um, they're actually rechargeable cells at 1.2 volts each, and they're wired in series like a string of sausages, so that adds up to 4.8 volts. Although when I actually measured it, it was near 5 volts. So we've got 5 volts being supplied, but we only need 2 volts, so basically we need to drop 3 volts across the resistor. We know there's going to be 20 milliamps of current flowing through the circuit, so we know the voltage and we know the current. Therefore, we need to calculate the resistor, so we can use the bottom formula here. So we know that we've got to drop 3 volts over 20 milliamps, which is 0.02 amps. And I happen to know that that equals 150 ohms, which happens to be the resistor that I've already wired in there, which is why it runs fine. I probably should have mentioned that LEDs have to be wired the correct way around, so you'll find that one leg is shorter and that's the leg that must go to the negative or the lowest potential difference point in the circuit and also that leg there's a slight flat on the body uh, which is quite hard to see but on the actual red casing it's slightly flatter on one side you can just see it there and that's the negative or the cathode the other pin is the positive or the anode so in the next example I've got two LEDs these are wired in series much like the batteries Basically the resistor I've put at the positive end and the uh, other end of course is negative or zero volts. Both of the legs point towards the positive end which are the anodes and both the cathodes point the other end and that's because electricity is going to flow from positive to negative in this direction. So both of them are pointing in the same direction. So in this example the voltages add up so we need two volts across each one which means in total we need to have 4 volts across the pair. However, they're in, in line, so basically the current that flows through this circuit is the same. It's still 20 milliamps. So in this case, we need to do the resistance equals a drop of 1 volt. Bear in mind our battery across everything is going to be 5 volts, so that leaves us 1 volt to drop across the resistor. So it's going to be 1 divided by 0.02. And that value equals 50 ohms. 
So we need a 50 ohm resistor in place here. This time I've wired the LEDs in parallel, so I've got both positive pins together and both negative pins together. Each LED still needs to have two volts across it. However, in this case, the current flow is now double because there's two paths for the current to take. So current flowing through the circuit, from positive to negative, is going to be 40 milliamps. So for this calculation, um, we still have a voltage drop of 3 as with the first example. But we have 40 milliamps, which is 0.04 amps, which means that our resistance has to be 75 ohms. Next time I'm going to move on to something a bit more exciting and I'll be putting together this pickaxe microcontroller board. Then I'm going to show you how to make LEDs flash, chase and also how to make servos move. In the meantime you can look at pickaxe.com for information. These are quite simple because they use them in schools. So there's lots of information and I use them in lots of projects because they're incredibly simple. That's all for now.